Welcome once again. In this session, we're going to be going through Titus chapter 1. Paul begins with his salutation, and then he gets into qualifications to be a church leader. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's chosen ones and the knowledge of the truth, which is according to godliness. Notice here that Paul emphasizes that the knowledge of the truth is in accordance to godliness, not just living the way you want to live and just doing what you want to do and somehow God's grace just covers you. Paul says, the knowledge of the truth which is according to godliness, in hope of eternal life. Hmm, interesting word, hope. If Paul said that to some evangelicals today, they would accuse him of not having the faith to get saved. It's like, well, don't you, you should know you're saved, not hope which God, who can't lie, promised before time began, but in his own time revealed his word in the message with which I was entrusted according to the commandment of God our Savior, to Titus, my true child according to a common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. I left you in Crete for this reason, that you would set in order the things that were lacking and appoint elders in every city, as I directed you. If anyone is blameless, wow, that's quite a statement. If anyone is blameless, how many of us are blameless? The husband of one wife. You see, Paul says this here because in those days, there were a lot of people who had more than one wife. They would have two or three wives at the same time. Now, this is not to say that if someone was married and their wife passed away or something, they got married again, that this means that they had more than one wife. No, this is talking about more than one wife at the same time. Now, to understand the reason why Paul said that, you have to look back in 1 Corinthians, where Paul talked about marriage, and he said that those who are married have more responsibilities and less time to actually dedicate to the Lord. And so he said, if you want to really spend all your time with the Lord, then stay unmarried. Paul understands that marriage takes time from you. And so the reason why Paul said, you know, that a church leader should have a maximum of one wife at a time is because if you had like four wives, then you would be so busy, then how would you have any time or energy to actually lead a church? Having children who believe. Now here, Paul made it a requirement that church leaders should have children who believe because, hey, if you can't lead your house in the faith, if you fail in regards to leading your children in the faith of the Lord, how can you lead anybody else who are not accused of loose or unruly behavior? For the overseer must be blameless as God's steward not self-pleasing, not easily angered, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for dishonest gain, but given to hospitality, a lover of good, sober-minded, fair, holy, self-controlled, holding to the faithful word which is according to the teaching, that he may be able to exhort in the sound doctrine and to convict those who contradict him. For there are also many unruly men, vain talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, men who overthrow whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for dishonest gain's sake. One of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, and idle gluttons. This testimony is true. <gasps> is Paul racist here? I mean, saying that Cretans are like this, he's condemning a race, isn't he? Paul says this testimony is true. For this cause, reprove them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith not paying attention to Jewish fables 
and commandments of men who turn away from the truth. To the pure, all things are pure. But to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But both their mind and their conscience are defiled. They profess that they know God, but by their deeds they deny Him. Being abominable, there are not very many sins in the scriptures that are classified as abominations. Being abominable, disobedient, and unfit for any good work. And as you walk with the Lord, may God open your eyes and open your ears to give you eyes to see and ears to hear the things that the world rejects. Seek him with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.